I'm not getting out of the car. I'm not. No. I haven't committed a crime. Find, find Josh. Fence. We make. We can make you land your drone. Yeah. Stop and search people yeah. vehicles to yeah. find drone or equipment. Yeah. Confiscate or keep yeah. drones. Yeah. Uh, all the equipment. Listen to me. Do not go. I do not know what's in I your vehicle. I didn't say in. I did not I say. I want, you're in. gonna either wait here or you're gonna leave. You're not going in that near I that vehicle. I'm just gonna go stand. Oh, just now you got stopped. Oh, we're not asking no questions, right? <laughs> Welcome to today's video, where we will be examining a notable situation between a citizen and police officers. In this encounter, the police requested the citizen to provide identification without any legal justification, displaying arrogance and imposing behavior. The citizen, by standing firm and refusing to provide ID or answer unnecessary questions, exercised their rights under the First Amendment. The situation became tense as the police, instead of remaining calm and adhering to proper procedures, exhibited aggression and a lack of professionalism. They not only showed a lack of respect for the citizens' rights, but also let personal emotions affect their handling of the situation. This video highlights the importance of citizens protecting their rights in such scenarios and clarifies how police should handle situations more professionally and appropriately. Watch to see how the citizen asserted their rights and how the police were outmaneuvered in this encounter. In the first situation, the police encountered a citizen who understood the law, and naturally, the officer was at a loss against such firmness. You're telling me what to do and what I can't do. You told me I can't stay there when I have every legal right to sit there. So you think that's all okay? Because once again, you have that gun in that- A situation involving a resident's complaint about another citizen's parking. The police were supposed to address the issue, but the officer in this video escalated the situation with a dismissive attitude. He continually sneered while the citizen spoke, which was truly a severe insult. I'm gonna give you my Florida investigator's license, which is uh, acceptable identify myself. This is incredible. You deputies have no problem violating people's rights, man. Apparently, you took an oath to defend the Constitution, correct? Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. What county is this? Alachua County. Do you all violate citizens' rights all the time? No response to that, deputy. No response to that. Suspects me of no crime. I haven't broken the law. Under the threat of arrest, has required to give me identification. Now somehow my identity is going to quell his suspicion of whatever it is he has of me. Can you call a supervisor on scene for me, please? Supervisor. If you want to sit around and wait for a supervisor, we're more than happy to do oh, that. Well, you got no problem sitting here. If we're a supervisor, I'd like for you yeah. to call a supervisor. I'm glad you got a smile on your face while you're violating my rights. Do you take an oath to the Constitution, Deputy? Thank you. Ought to be ashamed of yourself. Put yourself on the law and what reasonable suspicion is. You go ahead and smile now. I will be following internal affairs. Your corrupt internal affairs will do anything about it. Apparently you boys in blue don't know how to break that line. Uh, no, Hoffman, Hoffman, 1031 to 69 is 54, 29, 21. You need the number? 54, 21 from the vehicle. So now you're illegally running me through David. Boys just don't you know, know how to hold no it off. Yeah, but you also know there's a state you have to have a reasonable cause to run my tag no, through David. That's why that state no, trooper, no, no. that's why the no, Florida no. Highway Patrol. Sir, listen. If I, if I ran your emergency contact, look to your emergency contact information. No, just a minute. That one not. Well, it's 629 with a valid decal. You know, we got stuff May I ask why you're running my tag? Because you can't because you're parked in front of a house that you do not live in. Very suspicious. You don't even live here. You're oh, in this time and age, right, with terrorists and everything, right? At this time and age. Okay. 
You need to move your vehicle. So you need to move your vehicle out from your house. Okay? So you're saying it's illegal for me to sit there? Is there even a shoulder you're parked in the grass? It's an easement. Are you are you, you are you giving me a lawful you're free command? To go. You can go, or you can wait for the supervisor to come. I'm going to wait for like the supervisor. Why can't I go back in my vehicle? Because I'm standing out here and I don't know what's in your vehicle. If you're going to, if you want us to stand here to wait, because the way you're acting, I'm not going to let you get back in your vehicle unless you're leaving. Because I don't know what's in your vehicle. So can I cannot can I not stay on the side of the road? You can get in your vehicle and you can leave. You can stand right here and wait for the supervisor because I don't know what's in your vehicle. Are you going to stay here and wait as well? I'm going to stand right here and wait with you. All right. So once again, once the supervisor stay there, that's a simple yes or no question. Why are you sitting here? Okay. Where, where are you working? That's most, none of your, none of your damn business. Had this much problem none of your damn, you know why? Because you don't have people who know how to stand up for the rights and can't stink cops. That's why. You've came here. You've required me to show ID when I didn't have to. I'm sitting on the side of a road. Uh, abuse your authority. That gun and that badge doesn't give you abusive rights. Can I just ask you a quick question? Sure. Do you live somewhere? No, I, I live under a rock. See, now you're, you're being sarcastic, and I'm being, I'm just asking you honest questions. You're what getting upset you? off at a house. you got a private property, right? So you, in your experience, yeah. if somebody was parked right in front of your house like that vehicle is, yeah. would you call law enforcement? Uh, no. You'd probably go out and handle it yourself? Probably. Would you arm yourself and go out there and do it? Uh, may or may not. Okay, well, not everyone has that courage, sir, less, because this is who we swore our oath to, the citizens of Ohio County. Okay, Canada. all right. So I came here. Yep. Now I have to verify who you are. Well, well, well let, let's stop right there. Being in a car in a public space, as long as it's not parked in the middle of the road, does not automatically permit the police to ask for your ID unless there is behavior or circumstances indicating you may be violating the law. The police can request ID if they have reasonable suspicion that the citizen is engaged in criminal activity or if you are being checked at a legal checkpoint. However, if they do not have reasonable suspicion or a search warrant, such a request violates your Fourth Amendment rights. Florida law stipulates that in a Terry stop, police may only request ID if they have reasonable suspicion that the individual has committed or is intending to commit a crime. This is a crucial principle in protecting citizen rights and ensuring that requests for personal information are not abused. There, let's stop right there. So you think this is funny, Deputy? No, I do not. Think let's this make is funny. it serious. Let's look. Let's talk to each other, two gentlemen, okay, Deputy? What What does the Fourth Amendment guarantee? I'm not going to say here. You're, you're, See, you don't want to talk about something. You're going to lose that. But you keep, you, you keep avoiding it. I'm asking. I'm answering your questions, and you don't want to answer mine. I have a Fourth Amendment right guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution that says and seizures. There is Florida statute which states, in order for me to ID myself, again, listen to me carefully, required to identify myself in the state of Florida, I must A, be under arrest, or B, you must have RAS, or crime, or I'm about to commit a crime. Exactly. You have none of those standards. You have come here and said- David, let's explain this very nicely to you, sir. Suspicion. I have, no, and that's all I need. That, Reasonable suspicion that a crime is, or about, or has been committed. It, Deputy not understanding the English language, okay? Listen to me once again. In order to require me to... Just going in circles? No, because you're, you're not listening. You're standing here for the supervisor. I don't particularly want to talk to you anymore. You're free to get in your car and leave. No, if you see, want to get in your you're car, not you can listening. Leave, or you can wait for the supervisor. Crime. Do you suspect me of committing or about to Now? Commit? Now that I've died? Is your assessment that I was about to commit a crime? You can't answer that, can you? That's why you, that you've been caught in an illegal act. What? I'm not under and still detained. You have no control or custody leave. over me. You're not coming I don't near me. You don't tell me what to do. I'm telling you you're not coming near, sir. I'm looking to see what this deputy. Make sure you don't get a rifle and shoot me. You know, you cops aren't known for shooting people. But back to my point where you were embarrassed because I caught you in a uh the act me of committing. You want to say suspicion. Suspicion is not a crime. Loitering that standard's also not met because under the Florida statute, you must give me a reason to articulate why I'm in the area I am, Gator, and I'm working. So that quells your interest. I tell you, man, so being shot in the street. Believable. What's your patrol number? Do you have a patrol number or ID number? May I have it again? I honestly, I honestly, to be honest, I don't remember you giving it to me. I do remember you saying your name is 
Detective Tell, or Deputy Tell, I need more teaching. I appreciate that very much. See, you, I, I can tell by your body language, man. I'm a certified interrogator. I've been doing this job yeah. for 16 years. Look at your okay, body. Yeah. Look at I your mean, body you, language. You can't have a conversation. I really? tried to have a conversation. I'm ha with you. What are we? What are we doing and now? You're doing is jumping up and down. You're you're being insulting. You're being rude. But you want me to be nice to you. That's I'm not you asking you to be. be I'm not asking you to be nice. You okay. haven't been nice to me. You violated my Fourth Amendment. Can't do. You told me I can't stay there when I have every legal right to sit there. See, you think that's all okay? Because once again, you have that gun and that right to tell people what to do when you have no legal authority to do so. You, you, you can't deny any of that, can you? Body language is saying, I'm absolutely right in what I'm saying, and you're embarrassed about it. So, I'm so glad you got that figured out. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're a genius. You got it all worked out. Yeah, yeah. You're fast here in the direction. Guarantee my IQ is higher than yours, buddy. Guarantee. Maybe. Yeah, no maybe about it. Maybe. Guarantee it. It's possible. it's possible. I'm smart enough to expose corrupt cops. Yeah, just like I exposed your ass. It is clear that this is a citizen who understands the law and is assertive enough to confront police officers who are severely lacking in knowledge. Title 18, Section 242 clearly states that any person acting as a public official will be prosecuted if they willfully and knowingly engage in conduct that violates the civil rights and privileges of the citizens they serve. In this situation, the police easily come close to violating this statute. Yeah, you are. Yeah, a lot of people see you on YouTube. That's fine. I'm not the one that got to go home to my night, pretend I'm a hero, go to my family tonight, pretend I'm a hero, protect them with all the terrorism and everything. Yeah, you're not being told anymore. Yeah. Like you deserve any better. Listen to me. Do not go. I do not know what's in I your vehicle. I didn't say in. I did not I, I say want, you're in. You're going to either wait here or you're going to leave. You're not going in, in that, near I said that vehicle. I'm just going to go stand. It's in that vehicle, and the way you're acting right now, I don't trust you. You're going to either stand here and wait for the supervisor, or you're going to tell me you're going to leave, and then we're going to get in our car and leave. What did I just tell you? You can leave, but then we're leaving. That's the bottom line. If you're going back to the go, vehicle, we're going to get Go out ahead and here. leave. I'll wait. Now. She's not going to. I'm, I would not allow her I'm to such talk a scary her guy. Her. Okay, I have no weapons on me. Absolutely. I'm not gonna make any furtive Absolutely. movements. Make sure you don't pull your weapon and shoot Absolutely, me, okay? Sir. You can put your ID back. Uh, he's not violating my Fourth Amendment. How come you all automatically say it's arguing, and because you don't want to answer it, you want to classify it as arguing? Does it sound like we're arguing, or does it sound like I'm trying to? You want nothing to do with that, right? Incredible. I'm doing well. My name is Mike Hoffman. Okay, I'm Sergeant Phillips. Your ID number, Sergeant Phillips? 409. Okay. Um, has this officer... Standing, someone called in about your vehicle being parked on private property. Okay. All right. And then that you weren't happy with the way they were handling it. What I'm doing sitting here, is that in a crime? Um, if this is private property, yes. Okay. It's public easement, is it not? Um, without looking... I know correct. what an easement is, Okay. Yes. All right. Now... You've been, a, you're a sergeant, so I know right. you've been on the force for a while. Correct. I'm, I'm, I'm sure, although not semantic to know how far easement goes off the road. And the fact that someone pulled right off the shoulder is on public easement. I mean, if you would give me that much, this. Let's assume that I'm on public easement. Where I'm parked, is that a crime? Well, let me ask you this. Do you have a purpose for being here? I do. What's that? I don't need one. I will articulate to you why I'm here, okay. but I don't need one. I can be simply breathe. That is not a crime. Well. I'm not going to argue right now, easement or not, okay? I'm saying right now we're here for a reason, someone doing parked in front of their house. And that is totally acceptable, and I have no issue with that. Okay. I think you're doing your job right. there, and I think that's your job. After all the issue is, when this deputy over here demanded under the threat of arrest for me to ID myself, when I clearly articulate guaranteed a Fourth Amendment right, not only that, under Florida statute and Florida, US, Florida Constitution, he, under Florida statute, he must see that I've either committed a crime or about to commit a crime. I'm going to stand over here if you don't mind. Yeah, name. crime before or be under arrest before I am required by law to present an ID. Hold on, just one second. Four. He's going to jam me up. 
Okay, so do you agree with what I just said? Well, let me, like, all right. So when we make contact with someone, that's the first thing we do is identify them so we know who we're out. With. That kind of about the law when he has a right to demand under the color of authority, code US, US Code 18, Section 242, color of law. When you all put that badge on and take an oath, you become what's under the color of law. You I have understand. authority given to you. And use that authority under the color of law. What he did was threaten me with arrest if I did not give him ID. Standards met to demand ID from me. Is that, isn't that Are correct? We, have you, at any point, have you given them ID or no? I had they, to. He said he's going to lock me up. ID. Obviously. Under the threat of being arrested. Okay, so obviously we know who you are. Yes. You, um, I'm an investigator, as I explained to him. Uh, before, private investigator? That's correct. Before okay. I gave him my ID, I said, look, I'm an investigator. I'm working. He wanted to know who I was working. I told him it was none of his. And actually, under the law, if I'm not allowed to tell law enforcement, I can get in trouble with the law if I tell you who I'm working. Mm, I don't. I know in the, in the past when we what? have a... Sorry? I never asked you who you're working. Okay, would you like me to stop the video? Right, hold you on. you want to stand? Okay, just. Yeah, but he just told a lie. Okay, well, I know in the past when people are working as a private investigator, they will call our here at this address so we don't get calls like this, but, right? So and we the, could have avoided this whole Well, no, that's not necessarily true. And you are correct. That's something we normally do. It is a found in the recent past. Irregardless if I call in or not, I'm approached. I've had Depsy tell me it doesn't make a difference if you called in. I have to come out good to call in. And at times, calling in has got me burnt on cases. So I use my discretion on whether I'm going to call in or not. This normally when you do call in is from a starting point. I can't call in every time you I go mobile. You move location? Correct. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So it would be it would be a news goes mobile. You know, okay, now I'm at this location. It's it's you know what I'm saying. So now again, I acknowledge what you're saying. You are correct in that. But let's get back why this deputy violated my rights. And I, I want to lock you down on that because I feel you're being somewhat invasive in that. I look. I know I'm right. I've been an investigator for 16 years. I'm ex-law enforcement. He wants to say it's a joke because it was in the Department of Corrections. Okay, whatever. It was, it was 20 years. Say that just to try to get some professional courtesy, you know. Bottom line, Sergeant, he violated my Fourth Amendment, and he thinks it's okay. I'm going to file an internal affairs complaint on him, but I want a Sergeant, and nothing, I look, I'm not going to kid myself. Nothing's going to come of it, all right? I've been doing my act, it's not a thin blue line, it's a thick-ass blue line. I used to be part of it. I understand it. I don't agree with it, but I understand it. Threatening to imprison a citizen if they do not provide ID is a form of illegal coercion. According to Miranda v. Arizona, 1966, citizens have the right to be informed of their rights before being questioned or compelled to provide information, and the police are not allowed to use threats or coercion to obtain personal information without a reasonable legal basis. Get away. Okay. It wasn't until he threatened me with arrest that I'm like, well, shit, I need to turn my camera on. You know, this guy's going to put, and he told me, if you don't get your ID out, that, that's, that's a threat. He's threatening to do bodily harm to me, kidnap me. And I know that may be a funny term, but legally that's color of law to do what he did. And then you know what he tells me? I forgot about this part. He says, I can't be there. He told me to get in my truck and leave. Then he wouldn't let me go back to my truck. Thinks I'm gonna go get a weapon and shoot him. Okay, well he, that's I, he does, safety. Well, what no, it's not. He, I'm not a, being detained, but anytime, like on a traffic stop, when we approach a vehicle, and someone needs to get something out of their vehicle, we walk yeah, with But it's over her. with. He was done with me until he left. He doesn't have any right to control okay. me like that. All right, like I said, you, you're here on a job or whatever. Um, is there any way that we can confirm that you're here doing a private investigate or? I gave my investigator's license. I my ID myself. That All was right, my so ID. So we, we know who you are. We know who you work for, and that's why you're here, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. Um. And, you know. So I and I state that because I'm not absolutely sure. State roads, 33 feet. Um. So re. Um, right. Like I said, I want to move forward at this point and try to yeah. resolve it. Obviously, like I said, they were here. Um, on a call, young kids, she's saying, I guess there's a bus stop right no down here. I no problem with none right. of that. So when they show up and make contact with you. Ask. They have a right to ask. He does not have a right to threaten me with arrest, which he did. Well, honestly, right to be, and you refuse to give it to them when they're here for a lawful reason, that is, could be considered resisting with, without. That is an arrest. For resisting without violence, it's, it's, it's not. See, do you see where I'm going with this? You know, I'm an activist. I, I'm, I'm pretty well versed in the law. I've been arrested three times. I have two cases going to the Florida Supreme Court. Okay. One of them is over this very same matter with million dollars. All right, so I think I'm pretty well versed on right. what I'm doing. And again, you all can't, you all can't use, and I apologize for my, to be perceived as hyper. Yeah, the guy threatened to arrest me, man. Take my freedom away. 
and he doesn't have a right to or try to justify it. Yes, you have every right to be here. A citizen's concerned. To identify you. You don't, what do you, what does the law say? Because we're here on a call. Like I said, we did not itself initiate. She calls in a suspicious vehicle inside the vehicle. So when we get here, we don't know who you are. We don't know if the bus stop down here, if you're waiting to kidnap a kid, we don't know. Okay. Who, we don't know all that until we identify you. But what does the law say about you demanding ID? That's what I'm asking you to say. Round it with every other thing. I don't dis disagree with you on anything you said, except the semantical point of demanding. I, I mean, and, and again, you, you, you've yet to answer that. I, I, I've told you three times what the law says. Very succinct, yet acknowledged it or denied it. And I would think a deputy of the statue of sergeant would be pretty well versed in what it takes the U.S. Code 18242 deprivation of rights under the color of law. Okay? Well... You, your your right. knowledge of the law and stuff like Will that. Will you do this for me? Will you research it today? And just out of, out, out of I would say, just, just, I'm not being just, not you're not at all. You've been very polite. You haven't threatened me with violence or arrest. You've been very polite. You've been putting you know. There's many times I get the attitude these two deputies have shown. This guy here is don't want to open his mouth. And this guy here thinks everything's a joke. You know, so what I'm asking you to do is for the future, please take 15, 20 minutes today, research the law time. And in the state of Florida, the statute says to demand, not ask, to demand ID, suspicion that I've committed, or PC, that I've committed a crime, or I'm about to commit a crime. Right, and we don't know why you're here if you are a Do you, do you know what that means? You don't get to use that as an excuse. Reasonable technical suspicion means you must be able to articulate what crime I've either to say, oh, well, we think you might commit a crime, you might be a bank robber, you might be wanted, you might be a child molester, you might- Stand are concerned when we pull up and don't know why. I do, but I also expect you of taking an oath to the Florida Constitution, a servant to the citizens. I expect you to uphold the law because you guys take every opportunity to say that I'm in service, break the law. They're not so quick to stand fast on it. And that's what that deputy has done. He has broke constitutional rights. And I know that's maybe all we can just brush that aside. That's no big deal. We're doing what we're supposed to do to it, what I'm saying. We're losing our way in this country, deputy. I'm Citizens' not. rights are getting violated. The guy wouldn't even let me go back in my vehicle. He acted like I was a terrorist. All right. So, so we're done. I, I, I appreciate it. You, I guess. We leave a right to be That's there. Okay. I'm not, and and normally if I see a person come out, You'll get out and talk I'm like, hey, I'm an invest law enforcement, but I want to put them at ease. I understand. If somebody, if some knucklehead was parked in front of my house, you would call no, I wouldn't. I, just, I understand that. And that's why I try to do everything. If I saw her, ma'am, I'm an investigator. If you feel comfortable, call the shit. If that make you feel more. Because I, I don't want this. Right. I don't, don't either. You know? But, you know, I, I appreciate your time very much. I asked you to to law. And if you verify what I said is true, I want him counseled. Um, I will be doing a PRR. And, um, I will be filing an internal affairs complaint because I believe I'm studying my, my claim. Thank you for your time, ma'am. Is it okay for me to go to my vehicle? Okay, thank you. If you feel that the police are violating your Fourth Amendment rights, you have the right to ask them for reasonable justification or even refuse to provide ID until you are clearly informed of the reason. It's great when citizens are well informed about the issues they might encounter and have thoroughly prepared regarding drone regulations. And if you if you'll have a look here, drones under 250 grams are A1 subcategory. Okay, is there A1? If it's A2... An interesting situation involving the use of drones. The regulations for drone usage, UAVs, in the UK, including the Keynesham area, are governed by the rules and laws of the Civil Aviation Authority, CAA, and local regulations. Drones weighing more than 250 grams, 0.55 pounds, must be registered with the CAA. Users also need to have a UAV operator certificate, Yes, this is the general regulation and law, but there was a significant misunderstanding where the police mentioned 20 kg instead of 250 grams, which illustrates the police's lack of understanding. PACE stipulates that the police only have the authority to request ID checks or conduct searches when they have reasonable grounds, such as suspecting that a person is committing or about to commit a crime. In the UK, citizens are not required to carry or provide identification to the police unless they are arrested or searched under a lawful regulation. This shows that the police have violated PACE regulations. Sergeant, sorry. Cool. Um, so essentially, yeah. um, 
your drone? Does it have a camera on it? Yeah. Am I allowed to ask and am I allowed to have the operator ID? No, you're no. not allowed. Okay, okay. But, I mean, I've got one. Yeah. But it's a, the class of drone. Yes, true. Yeah, yeah. true. If it's under 20 kilograms. How, how much does the drone weigh? Is it under 20 kilograms? Yeah. yeah, two. two you mean yeah? You mean under two fifty? Two fifty. Over fifty, two fifty gram, not yes. kilograms. No, you're correct. That's quite yeah. a large person. Yeah, I was going to say that's. Um, yeah, look, there's, there's, you know, as long as you're not flying it into the car park, we, we've not got an issue. Um, you know, obviously you're in a public space. You're entitled to record in a public space. There's nothing, just as I am. There's nothing I can do to. We just ask if it's okay. It's just have a bit of consideration for that, obviously. When we take the uniform off, all regular individuals got our own home lives because parked in there. Some of those, are, most of those, are personal yeah, vehicles no. with people's registration plates on. Um, it's very easy for people to registration plate online for a police officer see that car driving about, recognise it, follow us here. We've had we have had instances in the past where people. So I can think of one instance a couple of many many years ago where I believe a um, female police officer had a brick thrown a through a window or something because somebody followed her channels. Um, one who was on police intercepts and stuff. He's talked about stuff like that where people have followed him home. So it's one of those ones where you know legally there's morally if you could just have a bit of consideration for obviously there are people's personal vehicles in there and the risk that comes with that especially because with their own private lives like like yourself yeah i'm here i'm here for the building yeah i'm not going to be taking in fact the drone doesn't pick up number plates you do actually uh, yeah and they can tell you know you can look up the first two letters and say oh that's from dudley or yeah Chris. don't collect number plates yeah but i'm looking at the building it's quite a modern building isn't it yeah so this was a fairly this was a bit built yeah. probably what you just before just after that i think was it oh. just before that really hmm. well yeah it's fairly yeah. new compared yeah. to some old police stations like for yeah. example broadby road so yeah it's it's yeah. It is a... emerson's green yes yeah is yeah, that uh, quite yeah. a modern one as well isn't it uh mm, it's a bit later. yeah it's a bit later that's it, more yeah. like where a lot of our like response unit and oh, custody right. units so a lot yeah. of people who get arrested will yeah. be brought here for um, them eh yeah well yeah I suppose. hopefully you can put yeah, them on we, the right we do, path we do the best we can put them on the right path and we do the best point we can. them to the right place to go oh yeah as they... we can with, with what we've got yeah. but um yeah you're, you're free to leave you don't have to stay here no, you, um, you didn't detain me anyway no no, no you didn't exactly. detain me would, but no you didn't do well, it I'm like, I, i'd have no reason to stay so you're not taser trained then uh no not the minute no uh -huh. hopefully hopefully fairly soon but not they, the minute. uh i i don't know to be no, honest with you no. I, I don't know um, a lot of people might not want to um pass yeah some people probably don't want to carry a taser and no. that's the thing it's firearms policing yeah. so yeah it's everyone's choice and you know, some people may have it, some people may not. So, you know, it's what it is. Just hope you have a good day. Yeah, and um, you. Like I said, obviously, if you are going to stay here, yeah. just remember what we yeah. talked about. Um, otherwise, no, I'm just doing a little bit, and then, um, and then I'll, I'll edit it all. Yeah. So. No You've been you've been very good. That's all right. Both That's of you. Fine. Okay. Well, you've done nothing wrong, have you? So you've got nothing to watch. So there's no reason not to. All right. Once again, this highlights the police's lack of understanding when the officer agreed to let the citizen go, but then approached them again. Kudos to the citizen for understanding the law and having the drone usage permit ready for the police to view. Conversely, it is disheartening to see the officer using the phone to lecture this citizen about the regulations. Threatening to seize a citizen's property without evidence of wrongdoing violates property rights regulations, procedural due process, and natural justice. Section 8 of the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984, PACE, stipulates that the police need a search warrant from a judge or equivalent authority to have the right to search and seize property from a person's residence or vehicle. Mr. Trainer, uh, recording. Yeah. Okay. Is that your drone unit, operator? Sorry? Get my operator ID, or is that someone? No, that... it's, it's someone's looked up the legislation. Yeah. If it's flying under 250 metres, yeah. the Aircraft Management Act of 2020 yeah. done because you've been recording. No, it's not true. Would you like me to educate you? Would you me? like me, you can't. Let me, would you like me to educate you? Would you like me to... Just... Station to hand, I'll have a read of it. And then, um... I mean, I don't do this for nothing. No, no, of course not. No. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. So that's taken off the government website. Police approved drones under 250 grams are A1 subcategory. Okay, if they're A1, if it's A2, in order for a police officer to be to be called and operate your ID, which is what your colleague's talking about mm -hmm. under here. Mm -hmm. Flight of an unmanned aircraft, reasonable grounds, the flight of an unmanned aircraft is taking place or has taken place, and you're happy with that, aren't you? Mm -hmm. The flight of the un by an unmanned yeah. aircraft taken place. Yeah, and if the remote pilot of the unmanned aircraft yeah. of the flight and reasonable grounds for suspecting, not the requirement. 
is applicable. My drone 250 gram is not is not an A2 competency. Yep, yeah, because I want to get off to my next job now. <clears throat> I'm okay. I know what I'm talking about. That's why I carry this. Is this it or not? If it has a camera, he has to have an, an operator ID, yes, yes? Yeah, uh, basically talking to him. I keep quiet it because of our height above the building. He's been stood basically on the pavement of Cage and not even crossed the threshold. Right. The Thanks so much. Do you want to take a picture of that? You know what, I would actually, yeah, for, for future, yeah, yeah, why not? Don't take my electronic fingerprint though, will you? <laughs> yeah, that's fine, I'll yeah. pass him on the legislation we just have. Said, just so he's... And that's part of it. It's if you're of... happy. Yeah. Yes, if you're happy, mate, my sergeant has just... Um, Providing yeah. that might be used for you to be aware of for the future, right? Yeah, so okay. This is part of the, the air traffic management and yeah. unmanned aircraft. Yeah, I know that. Events. Yeah. We, make, we can make you land your drone, yeah. stop and search people's yeah. vehicles to yeah. find drone or equipment, yeah. confiscate or keep yeah. drones, yeah. Um, or the equipment for you yeah. to show us registration yeah. details and other information for both pilots and operators. If, you suspect. if a citizen is threatened with property seizure without evidence of wrongdoing or without a lawful warrant, they can file a judicial review to challenge the actions of the public authority and protect their rights. U.S. police do not have the authority to prevent citizens from filming on sidewalks even while they are on duty to ensure transparency in law enforcement dude i'm trying to cross so what's the problem I'm, I'm what do you the fuck you think i'm doing can i get your name at least there are some police officers below who listen and are willing to engage with citizens they seem to have no intention of making unreasonable demands of the person filming okay. what they call you we know, we know, we know you I've are. Never met you I know. That's, you're not, good. that's good. That's good. You're not supposed to be me. I just sell cannabis. <laughs> I don't know what you do. I, I know what you do, and I don't want you to trick me. That's why he's recording right now. I'm not stopping you. I'm just having a general conversation. Are you going to scratch my back? Because I, I know a couple of you back that party a lot. You know? Yeah. Where's, where's, where's Connor at? Connor who? Oh, I don't want to say that. Dio, bro. I don't know a lot. Is he a patrol guy? I don't know. His name, no, his name's Connor. Tattoo right here? I have no idea. I know that. Alright. Hey, it's Nart with weed. With weed? Yeah, you guys. How much weed can I have? You know, they, that's why I didn't that's why I didn't get arrested. Who's I didn't Oh, just now you gotta stop? Oh, we're not asking no questions, right? <laughs> you just said I didn't get arrested. Hey, 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 like I just asked, you're gonna answer my question. Are you gonna scratch my back? Of course. Uh, sounds good. Well, depends. Yo, you don't wanna hey I'm, I got lawyers. <laughs> Uh, cause I know how you, oh, you've been in the force for a long time. Let's talk about two couple years back in like 2018, 2017. Uh, you tell me. You get no idea. I'm getting this. Huh? Six years ago, I have no idea. I don't know. Nice meeting you though. Exactly. No, sorry, I don't want to do anything. Exactly. Right. I uh, thank you. That, you should know him. <laughs> Kurt Evans. Kurt Evans. That's just one. I have no idea who that is. Okay, though. We're good. Hanging out, you might want to ask them if they're good too. I work around. That's what I'm doing. Make no sure doubt. Everyone's good. Yo, cannabis. No doubt. Cannabis. Make sure you don't racially profile anybody while you're out there. We, that's it, baby. That's we. Why are police officers uncomfortable with citizens exercising their rights? In the context of the Albany Police Department, as well as any other police agency in the U.S., the First Amendment allows citizens to film police officers while they are performing their duties in public spaces, provided that the filming does not interfere with or obstruct law enforcement activities. 
The Third Circuit Court of Appeals, in the case Fields v. City of Philadelphia, 2017, affirmed that filming and photographing police officers engaged in their duties in public spaces is a crucial part of the freedom of the press and freedom of speech. Let them know I have a right to do it. It's all good. Is that we have a right to do it. Hey, so don't talk. Cross. Okay, if you can so what's the problem? If you can push, go in front of I'm, the I'm, what do you the f think I'm doing? Right, there's, there's can I get no your name? I can say I what the f I want. So why tell me not to swear if you know I can? Sir, you just want problems. I'm trying to cross. <sighs> leave me the f alone, please. Okay, the I'm crossing right here. Is that okay? Yeah, that is fine. Okay, so then leave me alone. I'm not giving leave you Leave me time. the f alone. Here, sir, have a good night. Right? Yeah, you have a better one. Citizens do not need to prove that they are recording police activities for a specific purpose, such as gathering evidence for a lawsuit or creating a report. The right to film is a part of personal freedom and does not require a particular motive. Therefore, police officers do not have the authority to question why someone is filming in a public space. Moving on to the next situation, we encounter an aggressive officer ready to pounce on the citizen at any moment when he realizes he is about to lose the argument. I'm recording, I'm recording. I don't know I'm I'm not one of them officers oh. on TikTok and stuff, okay? Oh. Okay. Are okay. you not? Know, you know this stuff that you see on TikTok and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't. The process of stopping a vehicle and checking ID in the UK differs from that in the United States. In this case, the police have the authority to check a citizen's ID, but that's not the main issue here. What's crucial is that the citizen requested evidence of wrongdoing, but the police did not provide any. Hello, how Hello? are you? Hello, alright. You got a driver's license? I have. Can I look, sorry? Why? That road. I was driving to 40 mile an hour road. Yeah, road. I was doing 40 you as well. I was doing 40 as well, and then you speeded up, went into three lanes. I'm filming as well. Yeah, okay. you, you didn't tell me you, was, you didn't tell me you was filming, or did you? Filming, mate. You're talking over me. What? You're talking over me. I know you do have to tell me though that you're recording. It's in your policy. Um, Check my car out. Uh, and you and did you right, did you did you have everything on record on your car? Because you'll see that you. Yes, because it went into three lanes. Sir, sir, I'm not here to argue with you, alright? Right, well, what do you pull me over for then if you was in the wrong? Driver no, I've not got it on my... You've not got it on you? No. Right. Under 164 of the road traffic guide, I'll be yeah. asking your details. Monty, do you want to take some details, please? I refuse. I haven't done, I haven't done no crime. I haven't committed the crime. What's your name? I'm not telling you. Crime, so I'm not telling you. Are you recording as well? Can I have your badge number? Yeah. Can I have your badge number? Me. Pardon? Can't hear you. Can I have your badge number, please? Uh, seven three. Right, what crime have I committed? What crime did I commit? You was with him though as well? Yeah. But you was with him as well? Yeah. So what crime? You must have been talking together about, about what crime I committed, what you could pull me over for. It's best to speak to yeah, but there's two of you. He's not speaking to me because he's over there, look. Yeah? yeah. Why? Because you both know I was in the right and you you speeded up to cut me off, not let me in. You both speeded up to cut me off to not let me in. I was doing 40 mile an hour. Right. You was doing 38 mile an hour, Julie. Right. You've speeded up and come up at the side of my car. It went into three lanes, which was this lane, the end lane was but not let me in. Right. Well, you're smiling because you know you're in the wrong. I'm not smiling. You was. Police officers should exercise restraint and handle situations more skillfully. The officer in this case was aggressive and displayed a lack of professionalism by losing his temper. Such behavior not only negatively impacts public trust, but can also lead to serious legal consequences for both the individual and the police department. A good officer needs to manage their emotions, remain calm in stressful situations, and address issues fairly and impartially. Lack of self-control in their work not only tarnishes the officer's image, but also affects the overall reputation of the police force. Show you again if you want. I can prove it to you. I'm not smiling. You was. You just smiled at me. The sun is shining. 
I haven't committed a crime. Not I've not committed a crime. No badge number as well. My badge number is 05103. Right, thank you. Actor, I haven't committed a road traffic act. Yes, traffic but what crime have I committed? Vehicle. What crime did I commit? It's to identify that you, no, I don't. I haven't committed a. What crime have I committed? Sir, if you, if you, I'm going to ask you one more time. And I'm telling you one more time. I have not committed the crime. Give me your details, sir. I'll be, I'll be putting you under arrest. Okay? What for? Under what? Why? For what crime? What? What? I've not committed a crime. I have not committed a crime. I will take you to court and I will sue you. I will sue you. What can I? What you have to tell me a crime? What I have committed for? No, you cut me up. I'm in the fast lane. You're in the middle lane. You. I have to put my brakes on. No, you didn't. You speeded up, Stacey. Who was driving you, Aaron? Who was driving you? Don't like admitting that you was in the wrong. Whoever drove did cut us up. You, I'm in the fast lane. You don't give me Go on, let him. Let him. I'm not getting out of the car. Right. I haven't committed a crime. Point, point, Josh. I haven't committed a crime. What's a crime? Tell me the crime. Right, don't let baby see you do that. What crime? Because you committed the crime, not me. I should have got it on video like what you was doing, Sonna. Hey, you cut me up. I was in the fast lane. You was doing 38 miles an hour. I was doing 40 miles an hour. You put your foot down. You, it was, that's what you told me. You just told me I cut you up, but you cut me up. You speeded up. No, I didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. You was being nasty with me. No, I'm not, because I haven't, I haven't committed a crime. You, you checked my car. You said to me you were going to check my car and let me go. I need your, I need your name. I need your date of birth to check you out. I don't know if you're insured or not. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Well, I am insured, otherwise I wouldn't be driving it back. Or a system and I let you go. I haven't committed a crime. No, you committed the crime, not me. Honestly, I promise you. I am. You, you don't need to promise me. I know. I know there's no point to it. Sorry? I know there's no point to it. It's just because you don't like being in the wrong, do you? Right, are you forcing me to give you my details? Sorry? Are you forcing me I'm to give you my details? Right you are? You're telling me it's I'm breaking the law? I'm breaking the law, aren't you? Hey. You're telling me I'm breaking the law? Sorry? You're telling me I'm breaking the law by not giving you... Well, I have to give you my details. So you so you so you're making me give you my details? Hey. I'm recording me, I'm recording you. I know I'm recording you. I'm not one of them officers oh. on TikTok and stuff, okay? I oh. know. Okay? Are you, you not? Know, you know this stuff? No, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay? Well, obviously I'm you didn't because the, the way you were driving. Go to any solicitor, any you didn't the way you okay? were driving, you so didn't. You, you got it on, have you got it on camera on your car, sure, what you right. what I did? Under 163 of the road traffic, I've stopped you on the roadside, okay? For your driving license, that's all yeah. right. You said I've not I haven't got it on me, mate. Under 164 of the road traffic, yeah? I've asked for your name and date of birth. Yeah. If I haven't done a crime, then, then by law, I don't have to give it to you. What we want to emphasize here is that the laws vary from country to country. UK laws differ from those in the US. Therefore, it's essential to understand the specific context to handle situations and apply the law appropriately. In this case, we are not analyzing the correctness or incorrectness of the actions, but rather encouraging people to observe from different perspectives and gain broader understanding. I believe that with your level of understanding, you will know how to apply everything in practice. Thank you all for watching the video until the end. From the tense situation we've witnessed, it's clear that maintaining personal freedoms while interacting with law enforcement is crucial. Police officers are obligated to handle situations with respect and professionalism, and displaying arrogance or aggression not only diminishes their credibility, but can also lead to undesirable consequences. From this video, we can learn valuable lessons on how citizens should assert their rights in a calm and assertive manner, while also emphasizing that police officers need to improve their approach and handling of situations to ensure respect and protection of citizens' rights. We encourage you, the citizens, to continue watching, learning, and standing up for your rights in a rightful manner. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and let us know about any situations you've experienced or questions you have about your rights. Let's work together to build an informed community and protect our personal rights. Thank you for watching and see you in the next videos.